No. Let's try that again. What's happening, Boot Junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. And uh, what a fellow booth jump, a fellow booth junkie out there loaned me this really awesome mic. There'll be a review coming up, but I figured I'd record it on this one. See how it sounds. RE27ND. Thank you very much for loaning it to me. All right. Is ACX a good deal? <laughs> I got a hairball on my mouth. Stupid beard is shedding. <laughs> is royalty share a good deal for ACX? And I'm going to say, in 99% of the cases, the answer is straight up no. No, it's not a good deal. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, but it's not really a good deal. It's not a good deal for the narrators. And I also think it's not a really great deal for the authors either. And let me tell you why. Uh, I was uh, browsing Reddit, I'm on Reddit uh, a lot, and uh, in the voice acting subreddit, and really uh, a thoughtful author came in and said, I'm looking for uh, a narrator for my audiobook. What's the what's the prevailing wisdom on royalty share? Is it a good thing? And it's really wonderful that a narrator, I'm sorry, that an author actually bothered to come in and ask, because most of the time they don't. Um, and I, I, re I responded there. Um, you're certainly welcome to read it there. Uh, but I figured I'd just go over what sort of my, my rationale is, what my rationale is for uh, saying that royalty share isn't a good deal. What many authors don't understand, and what a lot of new voice actors don't understand, is how much work recording an audiobook actually is. It is very much a marathon. They're not easy to do. Uh, and if you're untrained, as a runner, would you say, I'm not a runner, let's run a marathon tomorrow? <laughs> you wouldn't, right? So as a new voice actor, narrator, I'm going to record an audiobook tomorrow. No, but you can get hired tomorrow on ACX because many of these authors will take maybe the first uh, audition they get because there are so few uh, auditions. Let's first talk about what a royalty share is. So with ACX, an author can submit their manuscript to the audiobook creation exchange that is owned by Amazon and makes your book appear on Amazon and on Audible. And there are two ways that you can pay. There's the per finished hour, which the narrator gets paid for the length of the final produced audiobook, or they can do an, uh, a royalty share. And the royalty share means uh, the author pays nothing up front and the narrator will get a taste of every audiobook sale that is sold. The share, it's the royalty share itself, it's pretty paltry. So on every sale of an audiobook, there's a, I'm going to pull the screen up here. What are the terms? And I'll just read it right from Amazon screen. Uh, royalties of 40% will be paid for exclusive distribution projects. That means it can only be through Amazon and Audible. When entering a royalty share contract, that 40% will be split between the rights holder, the author, and the producer, you as the narrator, each getting 20% of the sale. So for every dollar, you're getting 20 cents as the narrator and as the author. So knowing that for every dollar, dollar of book cost, you're going to get 20 cents on every audiobook sale. It's not for every sale. So it doesn't include the ebooks. It doesn't include the paper books. doesn't include any of that. It just includes the, uh, 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 just the audio version. And that's a, that's a big deal. So let's, let's sort of run that out. So as a, as a narrator and someone on ACX, the expectation is that you will be the narrator, the editor, the quality assurance manager, and the mastering engineer. You have all of those roles. So when you get hired to do a book for ACX, the first thing you should do as a narrator is read the book. You have to know, especially if it's a, if it's a work of fiction, you have to know how it ends to know how to play the beginning. You just can't start reading the book because you won't act it very well. So it helps to <laughs> read the book in advance. So that takes however long it takes. If it's 
going to be 10 hours spoken. It's probably going to take you six hours to read it. Six hours down. Then you have to actually record it. So if the finished version is going to be 10 hours, it's going to take you not less than 10 hours to read it. And that's if you are perfect, absolutely perfect with every sentence. You won't be. You're going to retake. You're going to have breaths. You're going to have edits. You're going to either do the type of editing that I do with the clicker or you're going to do punch and roll editing. But you're going to have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of retakes, especially in a great big book. For example, I do I do lots of I don't do audiobooks, but I do lots and lots of long form narration for Audible. I'm I'm narrating for Audible twice a week, every single week. And my finished work, and I'm I have really tried hard. I'm a pretty fast editor. Typically my projects, I will deliver 30 to 40 minutes of finished audio. And it takes me three hours approximately to do 30 minutes of finished audio. And that is without doing the mastering. So somebody else is doing a QA listen and doing the mastering in order to get it to Audible. So I'm just responsible for the narration, reading the script, understanding the script, interpreting the script, delivering the script, and doing the preliminary edit. So I make sure I have no retakes in there. I've got no breaths, no studio noise, no nothing. I do the preliminary edit and I hand it off to engineering and they go through and they do the mastering of it. And it takes me, using the techniques that you've seen in other my other videos, if you watch my other videos, it takes me about three hours to deliver 30 to 40 minutes of finished audio. And I've done this a lot. I'm pretty good at it. I'm not spectacular at it. I'm pretty good at it. If you're new and you don't have the editing process sort of in you, you're not practiced at it, you're not going to do 30 minutes in three hours. You're going to do 30 minutes in five hours, six hours. So they give you an estimate and I'll show you an estimate. I just picked a book at random. I just searched for books at random. So we'll just pick the first one that comes up. So this book is 8,500 words. They're expecting one hour. So for a novice person, that's a pretty good estimate, but pretty good. So uh, for a novice narrator, one hour of finished audio is probably going to take you five to six maybe even eight hours, especially if you're not really good at editing or you've got a high noise floor or something that you need that you need to work on. So a tiny book like this, nine, uh, one hour, 8,500 words is going to take you a full work day. Let's pick another one. Uh, the courtesan, I never heard of this one. Um, 86,000 words. This one is going to be estimated 9.2 hours finished. Call it 10 hours when it's done. Um, that will take somebody experienced like me. That would be not less than a week's work to do all of that stuff. Probably more. If you're a novice narrator, it's probably going to take you two weeks working eight hours a day. It's going to take you two weeks. And chances are your voice isn't going to hold up for eight hours a day. So it could take you as much as a month to get this down. And that means all of that time that you're recording this book, you're not getting paid for any other work, right? You're going to be working exclusively for this. Now, okay, so it takes you a month. Well, I'll just make it up in sales. I mean, that's only, it's only a week or two's work. I can, you know, make some sales. The challenge is, is for this book, its sales rank is quite low. It's the 351,000th most popular book. So if we take this book, and I have no idea, I seriously, I just picked this at random. So let's uh, search Amazon for this book. And let's see. $17 book. So you're going to make a uh, buck 50 on every sale. Is that right? No, that's yeah. I mean, you're going to make you're going to make just a couple of bucks. Uh, but is it selling? That's the question. It's been out for a while. It's ranked really low. There's no reviews for it. So how many is this going to sell? None. 
right? So you're not going to make this back up. So you're going to work for two weeks and you have to rely on this author or you to do enough marketing, which also is not free, enough marketing to recover not only the two weeks of work that you're putting putting in on creating the audiobook, but then whatever you spend on marketing, standing up a website, doing tweeting or whatever it is, hours that you will spend trying to promote this book in order to recover your costs. It doesn't feel like a great deal, right? It doesn't feel like a great deal for the author. It doesn't feel like a great deal for the narrator. Why doesn't it feel like a good deal for the author? They're getting the work for free. Well, somebody like me, who's an experienced narrator, would look at that and go, there's no way. There's no way I'm picking that book. But a novice narrator would go, oh, sure, I can, I can do that. It's only nine hours. I can do that. And then they get into it, and it turns out that it's a lot more work in it. And it shows their inexperience. They don't know the mechanics of their, of their job very well. They don't know the mechanics of, their, of, the, uh, 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 of the earnings very well. So you're going to get the, a novice narrator. Nothing wrong with a novice narrator. Everybody has to learn. But for the author, they want a good finished product, one that's actually going to sell. But the more inexperienced the narrator is, the lower I mean, just by nature, the lower quality the product's going to be. And that's not a slight to new narrators. We're all new narrators at one point. It's just that your work is not going to be as good as somebody who's been doing this for a long time. It's just the way it works. So for the author, you're going to get a lower quality book because you're not willing to pay. So if you're not willing to pay, then people aren't going to be willing to work. So the, the, the challenge is... If you want a good product, you have to be willing to pay for it. If you want to develop a good product, you have to be willing to put in the work, but you should also expect to be compensated for that work. And you're not going to do it on a risk. So the only time royalty share actually becomes worthwhile is if you think you can recover that money in royalties. And at 20%, at 20 cents per dollar, $2 for 10, uh, and every $10, so this is going to be a $3.50, whatever it is, um, you'd have to sell, you'd have to sell quite a few copies in order to recover the potentially few thousand dollars that you should expect to get paid in a couple of weeks work. And so the mechanics of it just, they don't really work out. And I think, I personally think that Amazon is taking advantage of novice narrators who are willing to do that job just so they can get books out there. And I don't think it serves the narrator very well. I don't think it serves the author very well. I don't think it serves ACX very well because I think the, uh, the, the product that they get is not great. So if you're now, here's what I'll say. Uh, I'll say this to new narrators. Go ahead and do one. If you're looking for real life experience, I have books on ACX that are there that you'll never find because they're not great titles. They don't sell anything, but ACX at the last stage allows you to pick a pseudonym. Mm. So you don't have to put your narration out under your name. So if you want to learn the process, if you want to pick a book and narrate it and go through the editing and the mastering and learn all of that stuff and use this as a training ground, and hey, maybe you'll make $5 a year on it, but it's a learning experience, then go for it because you can use a pseudonym at the end and you don't have to attach it to your real name. (laughs) <laughs> I did it. Um, and it's not a name that I will ever, ever utter in real life. You'll never hear me say the name because it's I don't really want it associated with my career, but it was good training experience for me. Take that for what it's worth. Um, but it helped me learn and understand the process for ACX. It helped me get hired to work for Audible every single week. It was a good training experience. And yeah, have I made like $30 in the 18 months that the book was out, out. I mean, yeah, I made like literally $30 on each of these books. It was like nothing. So that's that. I'm not a big fan of royalty share. And that's why I don't really participate in ACX that much. I have done, um, I ended up doing one audiobook. I don't love them as a marathon. I ended up doing one audiobook that ended up being a per finished hour. And it turns out to be a pretty good deal. Unless you're in the union, um, you might get $115, $150 per finished hour. So a 10-hour book, you'll get 1500 bucks, And you have to decide if that is worth a week of your life to do it. 
Now, some of the other pitfalls that new authors, uh, new narrators get into is one, they don't understand the mechanics of ACX before they get to um, delivery of it. So they'll record the whole thing and then they'll send it off and they'll go, your noise floor is too high. And you go, uh, my what? I don't know how to do that. Or your RMS is too high or your RMS is too low. And you go, uh, I don't know how to fix that. Or there's breaths or there's edits or you're not meeting the technical requirements. And the last thing you want to do is get all the way to the end and realize you haven't met the technical requirements and you got to do it over. What? No. And you also have to be aware that that authors have a lot of pride in their book and it's their for many of them it's their baby and they want it to they want that narration to be just right and they have a notion of how that book sounds in their head and there's nothing wrong with that when we read we all hear the narrator in our head the hard part is when the author's in head narrator sounds different than you as the real life narrator sounds in delivering their work and so they'll say well, that's not the way the character Johnny was supposed to sound in this. Could you redo that section? Or that wasn't that line doesn't sound like it's going to be foreshadowing enough for this other thing. Could you redo that line? And all of a sudden, if you get a load of retakes, more and more and more and more and more work. And I see that all the time on the narrators groups where authors will have strong opinions about the way the audiobook is delivered. And it ends up creating a huge amount of work for the narrator. And many times the author is not very helpful because they're not narrators in the beginning. So if you ask for direction or feedback on the way something should be delivered, they'll go, ah, oh, use your best instinct. And then once they have the straw man, then they'll call the straw man version. They'll come and try and tear it all down. And the narrator says, no, 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 no. I took my artistic license and my artistic knowledge in order to deliver this. And you're going to and you're going to take it. And then there's back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and it gets really, really difficult. So royalty share for a poor selling book or an unknown author or an author that doesn't have a marketing plan for their book, uh, I don't think is, I don't think it's a great option. I really don't. And I say that respectfully to the narrators, and I say that respectfully to the authors, because it's just, it's a hard way for anybody to make money and to deliver a satisfactory product. Um, so I hope that helps. New narrators, new voice actors, pick up a book and try it. Record one of your own books off your shelf. Record it. Do a full production. Just don't submit it anywhere. If you're going to work for free, do it for yourself with a book you want to enjoy reading. But give it a try. It is a marathon. It is a very difficult thing to do. It takes practice. Don't screw up some author's book because of your naivete. And authors... Be prepared for inexperienced narrators if you're not willing to pay. That's all I have for you. So now, go practice your audiobook narration if that's something you think you want to do. Authors, be willing to pay. And go record something amazing. Thank you.